There's a lot of things I love. Three of which, though, making money in real estate. Truck drivers, people from New Jersey, right? I love my people from New Jersey who drive truck and want to make money in real estate. And guess what? That's what we're doing. We're helping a truck driver from Jersey make a fortune investing in real estate. And we're doing it right now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. This is your show, right? This is the show for you, right? Specifically today, it's for Candace. Candace, you are a Jersey girl and a truck driver. I love it. I love it. I come from truck drivers. My grandpappy, my daddy, truck drivers, okay? And I love, I love the Jersey investors, folks. I, I get a lot of investors from all over the world. A lot of people from California, right? A lot of people from New York. A lot of people from Jersey. My favorite people, though, are the Jersey motherfuckers, man. Sometimes, I get some Portland folk too, right? Sometimes, like, the California folks and the Portland folks, they're like, oh, James, it was a good video, but then you said some highly offensive shit, and I, I was sad. My Jersey motherfuckers, they don't say that. My Jersey motherfuckers, they crack a fucking beer, and they're like, yeah, get that fucking offensive shit out of the way because we're sick of this cancel culture bullshit. We want someone who's like us, a scrapper, who's going to tell it like it is, right? You don't want everything wrapped in a little fuzzy, every kid gets a trophy bowl, a bow. That's not what Jersey's about, Jersey. It's some hard-working, blue-collar scrappers ready to do what it takes to make money, ready to put in the hard work, ready to roll up their sleeves, right? That's why I love you Jersey people. I feel like... Jersey and me, y'all my spirit animal, man. You are my spirit animal out there, folks. Them Portland folks, whew, they ain't my spirit animal. But there are some people in Portland who are like us, Jersey, JYs. They're like us, and they're just surrounded by all the crazy Starbucks drinking maniacs out there, and they want out, okay? They want out. But when those people get to see my videos, all the other maniacs from Portland see them, and they get upset, right? You check out the comment section every once in a while if you want to see it, right? But that's not what happens for my Jersey folks. So I love Jersey folks. I love truck drivers because that's what's great. It, it like, resonates with me because I'm from a family of truck drivers, as I said, and I use real estate to grow my net worth, help my family get a better life. And I want to do the same for you, Candace. And I have a four-unit apartment building. That's what you're looking for, right? You're looking for quads. You love quads. And you're looking for them to be priced much cheaper than what they are priced in Jersey, right? The real estate in Jersey, man, as much as I love my Jersey people, I don't love my Jersey housing prices. Jesus! I feel for you guys, man. The taxes, the pricing, they're killing you guys. They're nickel and diming Jersey landlords like you wouldn't believe. So people like Candace come to me to help them find the most passive, profitable cash flow investments across the country. And I have for you, Candace, a four-unit apartment building that you could buy with under $34,000 in cash. The total cost after your loan and everything will be one hundred thirty-five k. And we're looking at generating $3,000 in rent. As cool as my Jersey folks are, you know, folks, you can't get numbers like that in Jersey. But, but, this show is not just about being like, whoa, 3 k in rent for 135 k Where is it? Who cares? I'm going to buy it anyway, right? No, that's not what this is about. I'm going to show you a property that hits those numbers, and I'm going to show you everything wrong with that property, all the negatives about that property to explain those numbers so you, Candace, have all the information at your disposal to make an informed buying decision. I want you to know this market, the Cleveland market, the same way you know the Jersey market, and we're going to do all that right after this. Please. I think it's too big. 
No, I think it'll shrink in the water. Welcome back, folks. This is where I make, I earn the money, right? You make the money. I earn it. This is where I earn my fee, okay? I'm going to give you the most uncensored, unrestricted, unbiased take on these investment properties. 1004 West Ave, Elyria, 44035, $135,000 spent on the market 30 days. Now, that's a little misleading. It was on the market and then immediately got sold or put under contract, I should say. It has just fallen out of contract. We will probably be in multiple offers because this is cheap. 135000 for a four-unit building, right? It's technically like two duplexes, same lot, okay? Now, here's the thing. A lot of you are watching this from out of state. You have to understand, looking at the Cleveland market with out-of-state eyes, everything seems cheap. But you got to understand why things are cheap, this or that. What you need to understand is when you're dealing with neighborhoods that are like of C-ish quality, which is what this neighborhood is, you're typically looking at paying about $200,000 for an investment property like this, okay? 200 k Why is this one so cheap? What's going on with it, right? We got to figure that out, right? Is it just this screamer of a deal? What's going on, right? Here are the current rents. 500, 500, 675, 800. Looks good. Those are not even the market rents. That's keeping the price down as well, right? That keeps the price down a little bit, okay? The market rents should be 650, 650, 850, 850. So $3,000 or 36 k a year. Now, with that 36 k folks, you don't get to keep it all, right? I anticipate spending almost $17,000 having my team run this for you, right? You got RPM fees, lawn care, water, sewer, the tenants pay the other utilities, insurance, taxes, vacancy, non-payment, all that jazz, right? So a true profit is about $19,258. You buy it at $135K, you put down $33,750, bank kicks in $101,000. That would pencil out to a 42% cash on cash return, right? That's insane, okay? That is insane. But are we really there today? No, we're not there today, right? There's a few gotchas here, okay? You got all those tenants who are paying much lower rents, all right? So the process of getting them up to that $3,000 a month in rent Will it be done without any turnovers? I don't know, right? The property is still going to cash flow like a mother with the current rents, right? So you want to slowly work that uh, up to that, right? Slowly increasing the rents because you don't want to create turnovers, right? Because if you create turnovers, this unit where we got some person living here, we're going to have to redo this unit, right? Like the floors look fine, but that carpet, probably going to have to do something to that carpet, right? It looks cool right now, but when they move out, it's probably gross, right? This unit, right? You got this like old wood paneling and you got a drop ceiling, okay? These are reasons why it's priced so cheap. This is why it's not 200 k right? This, it's obviously dated. Next tenant, not a big deal. We're going to repaint it, right? We want to go with like a gray or a white. But this right here, the drop ceiling, you know what that probably means? That probably means there's some type of water damage above this unit, and the landlord just slapped that up there to cover it up, didn't want to do the job the right way. So you have to understand. Yeah, we could pick this up for 135k. Yeah, the amount of money we're eventually going to get is insane. But there is a reason it is $65,000 discounted. And this right here is probably why, right? So I'm sure we're going to need to do a roof if I had to guesstimate within the next few years, right? Roofs, they last about 30 years. A roof on a big old property like this, you got two of them, two of them, right? About 7 Gs a piece, okay? I'm sure there's no new roofs, okay? See, more drop ceiling, right? Drop ceilings, if they're not in a basement, are usually a bad sign. With everything in life, everything in real estate, you got to take the good with the bad. Does it mean like, oh my God, they covered up a leak with a drop ceiling. It's a scam. I can't do the deal. No, that's not what it means, folks. But at the same time, when the property is 135, and all the other properties like this should be 200. That also doesn't mean, oh my God, I'm gonna make 65 grand the day I buy it. It's so much cheaper, right? There's give and take. There's reasons for this, right? And I am here 
to help you figure out what those reasons are. Side note, that is a lot of toothbrushes, okay? Woo, we got a lot of toothbrushes. All right, more stuff, more stuff. Uh, here's another red flag that I see, which, again, doesn't mean don't buy it. still a gnarly investment, but you have to understand why it's so cheap, right? You see this? This is your electrical, okay, light switch. You see on the outside of the wall going to that light, right? They did it on the outside. They didn't put it on the inside, right? They rewired that, did it on the outside. What that shows me, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's to code. But what that shows me is you got a previous owner who's wanted to take the cheap way to do things, right? It's cheaper and easier and quicker to put it outside the wall to go to that light fixture than to put it inside the wall. So these are just like things we have to look at, red flags we have to see when we're buying investment properties that show us like, okay, when I get the inspection report back, there's going to be a lot of stuff that was kind of slapped together. Again, reasons for your $135,000 price point, right? You see the basement here, right? Old basement, 100 years old, right? Looks like that's kind of sagging a little bit. Do I think the house is going to fall apart? No. Is this a nice dry basement? No. Okay, is this like beautiful? Would we want to see something like this today? No, but you have to understand what you're getting. You are getting some newer mechanicals though, right? Both of these look to be under 10 years old and furnaces typically last about 30 years, okay? But what you're getting is very old structures, folks. Incredibly old structures with some below market tenants, structures that are not in the greatest condition, right? You see this, right? You see that? That don't look great, okay? These are just things, right, that are not going to be perfect. So you have to understand when you go to buy this, there's a reason you're getting a $65,000 discount on this stuff, okay? Do I think these are the nicest properties ever? <laughs> absolutely not. Do I think they're great investments? I absolutely do. You don't want to buy the nicest house in the crappiest neighborhood. You want to buy the crappiest house in the nicest neighborhood. And that's what this is. This is a solid C-grade investment neighborhood. You're getting approximately 65 k off what it should cost to pick this up. In exchange for that, you're taking on a property that over the course of your ownership is going to need a lot of deferred maintenance. Uh to continue to operate it. Do you have to go in and do all the things I just mentioned like day one? No. Do I want you to go in and raise the rents up to $3,000 a month on day one? No, because your tenants would move out and then you have to redo their units, right? You want to keep those existing tenants in there as long as possible, handle safety concerns as they come up, uh, replace things like the roofs that do preventative maintenance for more water damage uh, I as soon as you can. That's something you probably want to do soon, but we'll know more exactly to how close to the end of life expectancy we are on those roofs after our home inspection. But all told, this is a great investment property. There are other four-unit apartment buildings in the Cleveland market for this price in F-grade neighborhoods. That's a whole different can of worms, right? The neighborhood being the thing that holds the price down. Here, the neighborhood brings the price up because it's a good, solid rental market, but the condition of the house is what's holding it down, right? So that, folks, is real estate 101. You buy the crummiest house in the nicest neighborhood. This absolutely is that, which is why I said at the top of this analysis that this 30 days on the market is misleading. It just came back on the market, and it's going to fly. I presume what probably happened is you got a rookie investor who saw the crazy price point, put it under contract immediately. Then they got their inspection report back, and they're like, oh, my God, the house needs repairs. Obviously, the house needs repairs, folks. That's why it's a hundred thirty-five grand for three thousand dollars a month in rent show me a market in the united states of america where you can get solid c-class blue collar tenants paying three thousand dollars a month and you only got to come up with thirty three thousand dollars cash bank kicks and the rest it just doesn't happen okay so this is a solid deal but you need to know why it's priced so well Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.